today we're going to continue measures of center. That's the topic of today. We're talking about characteristics that are used in descriptive statistics. We have a population. We have, we want to describe it. We take a sample and we calculate statistics. And the general idea is, what's the center of the population? What's at the middle of it? Let me do a quick review here before we continue. These math symbols there, who wants to interpret for me? Let's see, who have I called on? A cadet uh, Paul? How would you pronounce that? Um, X, line X. Line X. <laughs> no, not line X. Close. I mean, X bar, which is also the mean. It's X bar, but it's more than just the mean. The mean of the sample. So it's a sample mean. Sample mean. If you don't have sample there, then you've got the wrong answer. It's the sample mean. What's this crazy simple mean? Get an R? Change. Change? Mm -hmm. No? How's your Greek? Uh, it's all Greek to you, huh? Yeah. Right? Can have the student help them out? Um. <laughs> You're going to see a lot of that symbol in this course. It's an important one. Not connecting? All right. Kowski. <laughs> Sum of all the values. Yeah, it's sigma. It's a Greek letter, capital sigma. And it means add these things up. Whatever's in your list. And in our list are X's. What do those X's represent to us at Hamilton? Variable? Yeah, it's our data values. Mm -hmm. In our example, which we're going to go back to, we're studying the heights of the cadet, cadets in this room. The X's are the data values, or your heights. So this symbol is saying all those X's that you have, add them all together, then divide by little n. And divide it. What is little n? Uh, a sample or the uh, number of data values in the sample? The number of data values in the sample, as opposed to big N, which is? Population. Number of data values in the population. So this letter is, is that Cadet Seuss? Um, you didn't know we were learning Greek in this class, did you? Petraco? I don't, I don't remember what it, it's called. Okay. Mu. Mu. It's mu, the Greek letter, uh, lowercase m, I believe this. Mu is equal to the sum of the x's, the data values, divided by big M. And what do I call that? In English words, it is the population mean. Yes, the distinction is important. It might seem like a, a small item, but trust me, uh, throughout statistics 105, particularly 106, it's real important you learn the language. And it's we have to know what we're talking about. Are we talking about a sample mean or a population mean? You'll, you'll see later on that's an important distinction to have. All right, then very quickly. What about the mean? It is a measure of the center. What are some good points about a mean? Where was I? Good points about a mean? Yeah. Um, see what the middle is? Or the average? Yeah, that's the purpose of it. It gives me a measure of the center. But as the measures of centers go, what's something good about it? Can I bomb it? Measure of the center, sir? Give you the mean. The mean? It's just a little number. Kind of like an in between. All right. What I was thinking of is the mean incorporates all the data values. It doesn't throw any information out. I mean, that sounds like a, an obvious thing, but we're going to see some other measures of center in a few minutes here that don't have that property. They deliberately ignore data values. 
So one of the positive characteristics of the mean is uh, it incorporates all the data values. Now, what's the flip side of that? What's the downside of that? Uh, if you have an outlier, then it'll throw your mean off a little bit. Exactly. Very good. A downside of the mean is outliers tend to uh, distort it because it's incorporating all the outliers. Another good property of the mean is it's a fairly resilient, meaning that if I take multiple samples and each sample I calculate means, I tend to get a similar number, so not wild, widely different. Now that's a good property of statistics. <coughs> I wouldn't want to take a sample, calculate a statistic and get five, take another sample, calculate the same statistic and get 500. That would be disconcerting. I mean, what am I measuring? Our data set is uh, your class, the heights reported as of Monday. I don't know if you've changed your heights by then. You might have a, one or more extra people. And these are the means by row and the overall mean for our data set. And just observe that the overall is 68.89 inches. That's the measure of center. If we were to describe this class's height, in a single number, we could use 68.89 inches. Anyone here 68.89 inches tall? No? That's another property of the mean. The mean isn't necessarily a data value. <coughs> it's a, just a number I trade, right? So no, we, would, we don't expect someone to be 68.89 inches tall, but that is our measure of the center. And note that our sample means, they don't change a whole lot, do they? And that's a good property. That's that resiliency property that we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, how did you get the mode, the total mode? Well, those are, the, those are what's coming at you. Oh, okay. Those are the other measures of center. I calculated these today so they'd be... Talked about impact to outlier. All right, now we're ready for the second measure of center. Today we're going to uh, there'll be four different measures of center that we'll talk about: a mean, a median, a mode, and a mid-range. Four M's. We'll go over how to calculate them and their pros and cons. The median is the middle value in this sense. 50% of the values are smaller than it, 50% are larger. It's the value that is in the middle. Uh, it's sometimes denoted by X tilde, but I have to say in my career and in the books that I've seen, that's not very consistent. You can bank on X bar and mu, and I'll, re I'll require you to know those. X tilde, just mark that down as, that's the author's suggestion. All right. What's a really good thing about the median? Why would we even bother using it? It's not a as affected by extreme values as the mean is. It doesn't bounce around if I put in an outlier. Not as, not as much. And that is a good thing. All right, how do we find it? Well, the mean takes a little bit of work. The first thing you have to do is sort your data values in ascending order, from smallest to largest. And when you do that, you've got two possibilities. You either have an even or an odd number of data values. If you have an odd number of data values, it's pretty easy. I pick the one in the middle. Here I have seven data values. I pick this one, the fourth, because there are three to the left and three to the right. It is the middle. And that's the median. In that case, the median is actually a data value, isn't it? 
That's not always going to be the case, but here it is. Well, what do we do when there's an even number of values? Well, I have to do a little bit more work. I've got six data values now. I can't pick 0.73 as the median because that would mean there's two to the left and three to the right, so it's not in the middle. And same kind of reasoning, I can't pick this 1.1 because there's two to the right, three to the left. Neither one is the middle. But what do I do? Well, simple enough, I'll take those two and I'll take the arithmetic average of them and I'll call that the median. So in this case, the median is not an actual data value. It's the average of the middle two data values. But that makes sense, right? Because now I can say 9, 0.915 isn't in my list, but if I imagine it being right there, I have an equal number to the left, and then I have an equal number to the right. So it is the middle of the data set. That's the median. Now let's go back to look at our data set quickly here. Uh, in the first row, I had we had five numbers, two, four, five, so the median would be the third from the least, 65, it would be 65, 70, 67, 70. So if I pick 70, there's two to the right and there's two to the left. And in this case, uh, in the second row, we had six data values. I would have to use the tech. I use the technique of averaging the middle two, and I think they were uh, 1768, and I got 69 as the median. Now, just a quick glance. Then, those are the means, and these are the medians by row, and this is the overall that I calculated. The overall median height of this class is 70 inches. The mean height of this class is 68.89 inches. Not real different, but different. Kind of an obvious observation. There are, there are measures of center. There isn't a unique, and this is different, but usually in math we say there's one precise answer and that's it, right? Well, on the measure of center, the answer is it depends. What statistic are you using? Median, mean, we'll go through two others. And they're not always going to agree. Just a different way of looking at it. That's the median. Now let's go look at another one. The mode, third line here. The mode of a data set is the value that occurs most often. The mode is always one of the data values. And now here is a twist. The mode is different in that my data set can have no modes, it can have one mode, it can have two modes, or it can have more than two. In which case we call bimodal, it has two modes, and multimodal, it has two or more modes. All right, let's pause and think about this definition of center. Can you think of some good or bad aspects to this definition? Yes? Um, bad aspect, there might not always be numbers that, or values that repeat themselves. Yeah, in which case there's no mode, so if you ask me what's the measure of center, I have to be silent, I don't know. It doesn't give me information all the time. Except the information, if there's there's no mode, I think it overheated. And the light went off. <laughs> All right, we can do this. We we'll do it the old fashioned way. 
unfortunately I can't show you the, all the data we bothered to collect. But in the mode, one of its characteristics is I can have zero, one, two, or more modes. So what's it mean when I have two modes? Well, there's two values that occur most often. So it doesn't feel like that's a measure of center when you give me two numbers, does it? But that's the definition of mode. Most importantly is when you use these. Um, as I've said before, we have calculators, computers to uh, define these values for us. You need to understand what they mean and when to use them. You primarily use the mode with qualitative or uh, nominal data. Remember back when we took a whole class to talk about data types? Continuous, discrete, nominal, ordinal, interval ratio? <coughs> well, this is one of the reasons why we talked about it. Depending on the type of data, that will influence which statistic you use. And if you have qualitative, nominal data, you will not use a mean or a median or a mid-range, you use a mode. So for example, if I'm trying to do a survey here and uh, say, what's your favorite uh, color? What kind of data is a color? Nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio? It's nominal, it's qualitative, isn't it? I can't take an average of that. I can't take an average color or a median color, but I could take a mode and I could say in our data set, the mode was green because the most the largest number of people picked green. And it would be the mode. For qualitative nominal data. And what you want to do is avoid using these two, and this one that I'll get to in a minute, for qualitative or nominal data. It just doesn't make sense. Another example we did, I think, earlier in class, uh, if I took the numbers on the football jerseys of the VMI football team, what kind of data is that? Ordinal. It's nominal. Well, ordinal, yeah, I suppose you could arrange you could range them in increasing number. Okay. But it's certainly not interval or ratio. And would it make sense to take a mean of the numbers on the football jerseys? No. Well, I'll I'll tell you in our data set of the heights, we had multimodal values. Yeah. Actually, in the first class, I had a couple of rows that had multiple modes. Last one, the mid-range. Mid-range is defined as the maximum value minus the minimum value divided by 2. All right, well, a redeeming value is that that's pretty easy to calculate. If, you have, if you're fortunate enough to have your numbers sorted in ascending order, you can find the mid-range of a, a, a billion uh, <coughs> data values real easily. <coughs> because I just take the min, the max, put that formula, and I've got the uh, mid-range. What's the downside? There are two strong downsides to this. Because the outliers control sort of. Talk about being influenced by outliers. The mid-range is defined using the most extreme values. It would be the most sensitive measure of center to outliers. What's another, a little bit more subtle reason that it's uh, a bit suspect as a measure of center? Think about when we talked about the mean. One of the strengths of the mean is that it, <coughs> it has all the data values. <coughs> Better or worse, the mean includes all the data values. 
the mid range. It ignores most of them. And the outliers. And it only uses the outliers, or the most extreme ones. Yes. So we're the maximum plus min. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm thinking uh, ahead to measures of variation. I'll blame it on the heat. Max plus min over two. It's the average of the two outline ones. All right. Now, with just this little bit of information, you see that we can do some reasoning about data populations. And I'm going to reintroduce this concept of a distribution of data. And right now, I'm going to draw these curves and let that suggest to you what a data dist uh, distribution is. If it's symmetric, what can you tell me about the mean, the median, and the mode? I should say, for the most part, we're not even going to be interested in that guy because of the reasons we mentioned. Where's the mean going to be in this distribution? Where would the median be? Same place. The median is where 50% are to the left and 50% are to the right. That's also the median. Where will the mode be in this distribution, this symmetric distribution? Right in the middle. Right in the middle. Mean, median, and mode. Sometimes that will happen. How do we describe a distribution that looks like that? Skew to left or right? Right. Because it looks like I grabbed the whole of the right hand side and yanked it up. All right, let's go through the same process mean, median, and mode. Relatively, where will they be placed on something that's skewed to the right? Let me ask, let's do the easiest one first. Where's the mode? Top of the. Uh, yeah, the, the peak here. That's the mode. Median and mean. Let's just, let me ask it this way. Which will be further to the right, the mean or the median? Median. I'm not sure what I heard. Median? Median? Because? It is like just the crossing off numbers to get to the middle one. What is going to be the influence of these numbers out here on the right, on the right tail? What will they influence most, the median or the mean? Median. Median. Mean. The mean. Yeah. yeah, the mean. If I keep going out here and out here, these are distributions of wealth. And there's Bill Gates and you know Warren Buffett out way out in the hallway. They're going to influence the mean. So in this kind of distribution, what I tend to see now, this isn't meant to be precise, but more representative. You're probably going to see them in that order a mode, a median, and a mean. Well, if I have the opposite situation, we call this skew to the left, that's still going to be the mode, isn't it? And now what's going to happen to the median and the mean, which will be furthest to the left? The mean or the median? The mean. The mean. Because these values here are going to influence the mean more than the median. Again, this is all just kind of a relative position of them. And this uh, is one of the reasons why 
in some of the statistics you'll see, you'll see uh, you'll, median will be used rather than mean. I believe I mentioned this already. Uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics often uses medians, like median family income. Why? What's the distribution? Skewed to the right. What's a more stable or representative value? The median. It always means that 50% are below and 50% are above. Notice the mean out here, at least 50% of the values are to the right of it. Not by any means. Or 50% to the left. Because it's going to be pulled to the right by these values out here. You just need to have an intuitive understanding of what's going on with the statistics to interpret them. And also, to guide you in which one should I even be using. Let's look at another shape. Well, my graphic arts aren't too strong. What about the mode? Where would the mode be in this graph? Three. 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 If you grant me that these are actually the same height, and they're not, uh, this is, it would be bimodal. The most frequently occurring values. And if I was a better artist and these two humps were the same shape, which I know they're not, where would the mean and the median be in this case? In the middle. Right in the middle. Is the two peaks are the same height? Yeah, these are, if they're the same height and shape, <coughs> then the mode are the peaks, bimodal. But in this case, the measure of center is here. And that might be a little bit bothersome, right? Because I've got a whole bunch of data values here and here, and my measure of center isn't close to any of them. You have to be aware of that. In bimodal distributions, your measure of center doesn't tell you as much as in other cases, right? It can be misleading. So I, I want you to not think that Man, all I need is a mean or median, and I understand what's going on. No, you have one piece of information. You've got to be a statistical detective here and think further. What is the data really telling me? Oh, it's too bad. I have a couple of great graphs here that I got from the internet, but we're not going to be able to do those. I'm not going to try to reproduce them. other topics. This will probably be abbreviated today. I'll catch you up on Friday. Uh, be sure to bring your calculators Friday, all right? I think I said, I'm going to tell you when you need to bring your calculators, and I didn't tell you Monday that you needed to bring them today. So now you got the message. Bring them from here on out. There is an, another kind of need. <coughs> so I I lied when I said they're just four. There's actually another that comes in for the people. Purpose, it's a weighted mean. And all of your lives are greatly influenced by an example of statistics. Does anybody know what it is? <coughs> your GPA is a fine example of this statistic, a weighted mean. In a weighted mean, we have values x's, x1, x2, x sub n, and each of them have weights. Now, what would the analogy be in uh, the GPA? Well, an A is assigned a 4, 
a B, a 3, a C, a 2, a D, a 1, and an F is 0. Those are the data values, the X's. But not all A's are the same, are they? Depending whether it's a one credit course, or a three credit, or a four credit credit. So then we have the weights. So these are my X's. And then the weights can be 1, 2, 3, or probably 4. I think we can stop there. And what's the formula for your GPA? Or the weighted average? Well, it's the sum. We're adding things up, so I'll use that Greek sigma sign. But what do I add up? I just don't add up these numbers that correspond to your grade in the course. I multiply these numbers by the weight, the number of credit hours. So it's the x sub i times the w sub i. Or I think the author actually uses, leaves off the subscripts. The sum of the x's times the w's. But now, what do I divide it by? Well, I can't divide it just by the x's. I have to divide it by the sum of the weights. In your case, it would be the sum of the credit hours. Ooh, brutal here. So let's do a calculation. Let's say, first semester, how many credits are you taking to student? 13.5. So let's say you have to get an A and a 3 credit, another A there, and slip down to a B and a 2 credit. That's 9. And you're going to get a C and a 4 credit. That gets you to 12. All right, 6, 10. What's his GPA? Well, the weight, the value of an A is a 4. That's the value. That's a 3. That's a 2. So it'd be the sum of the X's. These are my X's and these are my W's. So it would be... 4 times 3 plus whew, 4 times 3 plus 3 times 2 plus 2 times 4 all over the sum of the weights, which is uh, 6, 10, 12. We have a calculator handy. We've got 12 plus 12 plus that's 26. 24. 6 is 30 and 8. So we get 38 over 12. And what's the GPA? 3. 3.1. 3.1? 3.6. All right, that's enough. <laughs> I yield to the heat. We didn't cover as much as we needed, but I will see you Friday.